never wanted a regular type life. What's that? Pints of the pub and smart watches? It's a lot of money. What are you doing? I'm talking to an empty telephone, darling. I don't understand. Because there's a dead chap on the other end of this line. Two tip. A chap inside once told me, don't become attached to anything you're not willing to say to the pit to in 30 seconds flat. If you feel the heat around the corner. Okay, hi guys, and welcome once again to our monthly video podcast show. And I'm joined by the legendary Mark at Long Island Watch. How are you, sir? I'm doing better now that I am talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I see you uh, doing a little bit of traveling, a vacation. Yeah, I actually did a vacation uh, last week. I was in uh, Arizona. Nice, very yes. nice. It was very nice. Good to, good to get out. Good to get out. You went to the Grand Canyon? Yeah, that was one of the things. I stayed in Sedona, which is uh, about, I don't know, about 100 miles or so north of Phoenix, and then took a day trip to the canyon, which is like another wow. 100 miles or so outside of Sedona. But yeah, it was really nice. Beautiful. Yeah. I, I'm dying to go. One day I will go. How it's was a big, it? It's a big hole in the ground. I mean, I was <laughs> <laughs> I was there 20 years ago. I remember when I saw it, I was like, well, it's... It's a big hole in the ground, and it really yeah. is. It, right. It's cool to see, but you know, it grows old pretty fast. <laughs> but right, definitely right. something on the bucket list to, to see. Truly noted. Right, yes. so, to, so today um, we are doing... Uh, sorry, I'm a bit all over the place. Oh, okay, uh, my notes. So last, last episode, yep. um, I, I was thinking about, oh, what are we going to do next? And I did a video very early in my YouTube today's of... 10 underrated top 10 underrated brands okay great and i really wanted to update that and then and then you text me uh what was it something very similar underrated watches or yeah strange uh, yeah. watches strange yeah yeah different watches strange watches different ways unusual to tell the time watches. unusual right. yeah yeah and, mm. and and the light bulb went off in your head yeah so i thought okay let's just combine the two unusual i'm probably going to talk more about brands yeah. In general, sure. Because you know the history stuff. Um, a little bit of both. A bit of both. I guess. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. So I kind of veer off watches a little bit here and there, but that's okay. It'll Good. Be fun. You, you have to do a wrist check. Oh yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna let you go first because you okay. never do. Okay. <laughs> in honor of you, uh, thank you. I'm doing the I'm doing the the short scarf. Thank you. I appreciate so, it. So uh, for my viewers at home, this is as you guys know, that's yep. my 30 Atmos, um, and they sent me. Oh, you have the they, bracelet. They made the bracelet for yeah, it. Yeah, they did. I just got. So, I just got those. <laughs> you just got those. Good. Yeah. Um, I'm. I'm still like kind of forming my thoughts. There's. There's a lot. I'm. Re there's a few things I'm relieved about. They haven't done it too thick. Mm -hmm. um, and I like the way it feels. Yep. Uh, I was concerned because you know it's got 22 millimeter yep. lug width. Mm -hmm. it's, it was going to be huge and bulky and heavy, right. but it, it does no, it taper. Taper, it taper as well. Yeah. I've got my own qualms with it. I like it, but I have my own niggles too. What, can I hear yours? I'd love to hear yours. Uh, my God, I, they, they'd kill me. Um, yeah, I can't <laughs> believe they made it with hollow end links. Yes. That kind of, that, that dragged me down. I was yeah. like, I opened the package. This, I mean, when I say I got them, I already had them. I just got to restock. Right. And I was like, hollow end links, really? 
It's like, come on. Yeah. That's my major, I, I call them niggles. That's my major niggle with it. Yeah. Everything else is spot on. It's fine. The clasp is good. The the yeah. center, the polished center links are nice. The diver extension's yeah, nice. Yeah, everything works good. Yeah, just just a shame about those end links. Anyway, yeah. and on the other side, as we're talking um, uh, underrated brands, I have my Fortis Cosmonaut. Very nice. I wore this because then I don't have to talk about it because it's because oh. this was difficult. I had like twenty yeah. brands I wanted to talk about. Right. Yeah. Um, I know. I saw that. Yeah, everybody. Yeah, I've got like ten honorable mentions, which yeah. we'll do at the end. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, how about you? So I went the other way. See, I didn't wear the ones that I'm gonna talk about because like there's two of the brands I own, and I, I want to talk about them. So, right. but I am doing uh, Breitling Aeros uh, Aerospace. Nice. I love like, that watch. Sometimes I call it Navitimer for some reason in my brain. My brain wants to say Navitimer. You know, some of the early, early aerospaces actually had Navi time on a dial. Oh, did they really? Yeah. Oh, no, this is like one of those, this is like the watch I remember from my childhood. And then, right. for you, since you commented oh. on Instagram yesterday. <laughs> nice. It's nice. for you and for them. DuckTales money. Yeah, nice. this is my Scrooge McDuck time is money. DuckTales Every day that I making DuckTales. Uh, yeah. It's a, it was a limited edition of like 5,000 pieces. I got this, it had to be sometime in the 90s. Mm, sometime in the early 90s. That makes 90s. sense, that and makes sense. I still have it. It still, it still works. Purchase at the Disney store in, nice. in the Smith Haven Mall on Long Island. <laughs> they, Disney, if you're listening, please remake, I, reissue the yeah. watch. I will buy it. So um, <laughs> I went on, on eBay to try to find one. They, uh, you can find them here and there. Did you find any? Yeah, it, terrible condition, I was just yeah. like, uh, yeah. Even this one, if you look close enough, the dial is actually like starting to pit. Right. From the, the plating is pitting, the whole of the case is corroded, but doesn't matter. Oh well. Still does oh, the well. trick. Nice. That what yeah. a what a incredible twosome there. Yes, thank you. Very nice. Thank um, you. I should point out to the viewers at home. Um, so there's out of the five picks, we've I, I've cheated a little bit. Two luxury two affordable and one vintage. So those are the kind of rules. Did you manage to stick to that? I or? try, yeah, I think I did, kind of. Nice, I nice. think I, I think I was uh, fairly, fairly good in doing that. Good, and nominations for your picks in the comments below. I love hearing that, especially what you guys uh, think is- Yeah, uh, definitely, because- Criminally underrated. Yeah, because when you, you know, when, when you pose this idea, I, I thought of my five actually, I was like, oh, it's gonna be difficult. And I thought of my five, mm. like really fast. Yeah. And I was like, wow, I. Everyone's got their own touch and taste on what's underappreciated or, or as you undervalued, underappreciated or whatever. Yeah. It's like, wow, there's gotta be so much out there. So I'll, I'll kick it off with a, with a, it. Um, an affordable, and I own one of these, uh, a Yes Watch. A and Yes Watch. Yes, okay. Y-E-S. And it is a digital watch and they came out in the mid to late 90s. Uh, mm -hmm. And I actually know the guy that designed them, founded the company. Uh, he's from, I believe, Norway, definitely Scandinavia. Um, right. uh, Bjorn uh, Karteman Tin, I believe his name is. He did a couple of watches here and there. He's, he's like a freelance designer, kind of. But he started this brand, uh, Yes Watch, and, and obviously you'll throw up images. What oh a Yes Watch God. is, it is a total, it's a total what calendar. What the hell? It does everything. It'll show you, it, it, it visually displays on the watch without numbers. Sunrise time, sunset time, moonrise, moonset. Is that a digital display in the middle? Yes, it is. They have a wow. bunch of different ones. It'll do, they'll do phase of the moon, it'll do 24 hour time, it does, uh, has an alarm, it, I, I know because I, I own one. Uh, it'll do multiple time zones, it's really, everything you want at wow. a glance um if you're into that kind of thing i just like that it displays so much info and these are the one i own and maybe the ones now are can kind of download data i don't know um mm -hmm. the one i own is all just pre-programmed so you just tell it your latin lounge where you are and it takes a few minutes and it programs itself um, that is crazy and, and it's friggin' accurate when that little 24-hour needle passes sunrise Sunrise is actually happening, and then when it passes sunset, sunset, moonrise, moonset, phases of the moon. Yeah, it's just really cool. I, you know, for a total calendar kind of thing, and they aren't too pricey. They're not horrible. Right. How much? How much are we? Under talking? a thousand. 
Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, they're, they're just, I remember I paid a couple hundred bucks for mine. It was all steel, but they make titanium ones and this and that. Um, very, very cool. It's quite adventurous. For... Yeah, I th I'd say some people would probably say they're damn ugly. Um, yeah. <laughs> very possibly, almost like a, like a Sunto kind of right. look to it, you know. Yeah. Um, but they're, they're not overly tremendous. Uh, but uh, they get my vote because they display so much information in such a small package. Yeah. And I think that's so cool. Would you consider this a micro brand? Yeah, he's definitely a micro brand. Right. I've never seen a micro brand th that has combined any G digi like this. Yeah. I it's cool. It's got the 24 hour needle. Um, just so wicked. Like I said, it's got, it just has so much stuff going for it. I cannot imagine the cost of. The, the prototypes and research and development because this is n n you'd have to build this from scratch well you know what it is is the um he's i guess an industrial designer by education and he just mm -hmm. has a knack for it and mm -hmm. you know like i said it's just the ability to put so much information into a display without having the need to switch displays that's yeah. just like the way he displays sunrise and you know the, if you're looking at the picture it's um you know how much black there is Right, that's all sunset, see, yeah. and then on the outer ring there could be other black, you know, blocks, and that's moonset, um, and it just I don't know, it just works so well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. He's counting. Uh, Seventeen complications I can count so far. Yeah. yeah. Probably Real, more if you. Probably more. Yeah, that's nuts. And like you said, like I said, you, you've never heard of it, and that yeah. just, you know, kind of further to the point that they are underappreciated. In nice. So yeah. when did you buy yours? Oh my goodness. So I met him. He told me about the brand. I probably bought it not long after that, maybe 20 years ago. Oh, wow. Okay. So it's been going for a while. And it still works. I changed the battery every, you know, two that's years or so. It, it actually runs on two cells. It runs on a, a three volt cell and a one and a half volt cell. One to take care of the timekeeping functions uh -huh. and one to take care of all the display functions. Extraordinary. That is absolutely extraordinary. And I, I'm quite sh impressed that it's been going so long uh, because I, I, when I immediately loaded up the page, I yeah. thought, oh, this looks like recent. Yeah, yeah, no. He's been around for a while. That's crazy. Yeah. Like wow. I said, he started in like the, I think like the mid to late 90s is when he started. Right. Right, that is very, very cool indeed. Yeah, <laughs> I think we should just end the show there. Okay, Done. I'll see you later. <laughs> see you later. <laughs> Mine is so uh, the antithesis of this, but it's because Shoot. it's mostly about heritage. My first is an affordable pick. Wait, sorry, so how would you classify that? Yes, affordable. Or? Affordable under yeah. a thousand? Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. fine. And, and I know there's gonna be people that say, oh, well, that's quite that's, expensive. That, that's expensive, but... yeah, not in the for that kind of tech. Yeah, and not in my not in my world, not in the watch world, under a thousand is affordable. Right, okay. So my, uh, mine is an affordable pick uh, that you can buy new or vintage, and it's uh, our favorite, uh, Bulova, Bulova, Bulova. <laughs> Bulova. 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 At the time of recording this, and this is, this is gonna hurt my brain, but I, I'm in the middle of editing this, so by the time you guys see this, it would have, I would have published it, fingers crossed. Um, I got invited to the, uh, uh, the HQ in the Empire State Building. Oh, nice, nice, nice. And they had, um, they have a museum. Oh, cool. They gave me a tour, and it was like a crash course in uh, Bulova. Yeah. Bulova. Yeah, yeah. I think it's the most underrated brand I've of all time because I had no idea of so much history. History. So much, you know, I've just not jotted a few down. That There's the Devil 666 Diver, the Lunar Pilot, yep. Accutron, of course, which yep. we both yep. know yep. and love. New Accutron, the vintage stuff going from Art Deco to Computron. Oh, yeah. Uh, the, the mill ships they've just come out with, which are those beautiful kind of um, very, very early military divers mm -hmm. and then there's their military watches which goes back to the turn of the century right world war one world war two vietnam uh, joseph Bulova, he had like some hundreds of patents not just watches he was an inventor right. and an okay. a real real pioneer uh and then we've got the Lindbergh lone eagle which was Lindbergh was their first brand ambassador mm -hmm. and this is nobody was doing brand ambassadors and this is 19 something i can't even remember when okay um, 
the Stars and Stripe chronograph, which was about mid-century. The Curve, which was more recent, where That's they cool. actually yeah, bend. They curved the whole, they curved the whole movement. The whole quartz high frequency movement. Incredible stuff. Yeah. And not to mention that the, the, the Actron technology being used in over, I think it was like 42 or 46 missions. Mm -hmm. my, my video, I'll put a link there by the time it comes out. Uh, I go into all of this. Right. And I was just, I, I, I'm just flabbergasted. Yeah. Really. I, I had a marine star growing up. Uh, late oh, nice. 80s, early 90s. It was a black chronograph with white dial, gold sub dials. Mm. Yeah. It was pretty cool. Nice. And then, of course, you've got the Actron. Yeah. There's just so much there. There's so much history and stories and, and, and involvement. And I, th I, th I would like to say I think it's the greatest American watch brand that's ever existed. Um, but, uh, it, it just overshadows everybody in terms of history. It just, right. You know? So well, when did, do you know when they got bought out, bought by Citizen? I think it was 2008. Eight. Okay, I might, so, I so, might not too, so not too long ago. No, not too long ago. They had a bit of a shaky period. I mean, yeah. it's fairly obvious. A lot um, of those guys did. Yeah, um, but these, they, everyone was grappling with this quartz crisis. Uh, sure. But I think I think they're doing they they they're going back in the right direction. I think the Mill Ship mm. in, is a prime example of, of like a watch brand that is like you know what let's go back to the heydays. So yeah, I, I'm looking at Blover with the new eyes now. Cool. Really new eyes. Um, and, and they're affordable. You know? Yes, for sure they are. Yeah. yeah. So that's about it, really. Well, it's, a, it's a good pick. Thank you. When Thank I you. saw it on your list, I was like, oh, yeah, it's actually a good point because they are underappreciated. Yeah, yeah def they definitely. Are. Yeah. I think a lot of it has got to do with uh, they're in, uh, Macy's and malls. Yeah, and they're not you know? really into the automatics so much. N right, if, right. If at all, actually. Um, yeah. yeah. So they're mostly the precisionist they're, movement. Yeah. Kind of, I mean, it's something to be incredibly proud of. Yeah, but I think it's I think it's something that's not really enamored enamored over by our, our, our circles, if you will. Yeah, if it doesn't, and which kind of would which would be a great segue then into into my into my next pick. Oh, um, so perfect. yeah, I'm going to go into, I guess more luxury. Uh, this would be citizen, uh, Campanola. Which, oh, nice. Yeah. Which nice. is, it's like this little subset of citizen that I don't know from the looks at the website. Now it looks like it might be, <laughs> it might be on its way on its way out. Oh no. I, I mean, cause they don't have that much anymore. Right. But if you go back into the historicals, they've got tons of these super duper complex calendar you know perpetual calendar watches yeah. that just have you know you think like um think blue angels nighthawk but with like a little class to it you know right, um, right but right. so campanola does some courtsies and they do some autos the autos actually have like high-end swiss movements in them which is kind of funny mm. yeah that's um, bizarre isn't yeah it? right isn't it um yeah <laughs> they're still making the watch in japan but they use uh, high-end Swiss movements, uh, they, but they have the, the hand lacquered dials, uh, Arushi, you know, all that, all that stuff that um, comes out of Japan, like from Seiko. Yeah. Uh, and then in, in, on the quartz end, you know, much like the Yes watch, they have these super complicated celestial watches that actually display the constellations. That's what I'm looking at now. Yeah, wow. I mean, they're a couple of grand, so I'm going to put them in the luxury market. Right. Um, so is, sorry to interrupt, yeah. is this what Grand Seiko I knew you were going to ask that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think, you know, I, I guess yes in a way, but I don't think so in a pride perspective. I can't say, uh, Grand Seiko is like, you know, the, the pride of Japan, the pride of Seiko. I don't right. think this holds, I could be wrong, but I don't think this holds the same regard. Because if it did, more people would have heard about it. Because yeah, I don't think most true. people, I, I don't think most people have heard of, I mean, Campanola's been out for a long time. But I don't think people would not know it if, if it was that big. It sounds Italian, Campanola. It's definitely not a Japanese word. No, exactly. <laughs> right? It, it's funny with the Swiss and the, the Latin uh, name or Latin sounding name, it's almost as if they're trying to like appeal yeah. or rival. M to, right, to more of a European feel, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, out of, the, out of the Japanese feel. You know, even though there's no real citizen brand, they have their own logo and stuff and they're 
I don't think there's citizen branding from the exterior. I think it's just it's mm. all Campanola. Um, so I, I guess they kind of want to seg segregate it a little bit. They used to predominantly be just quartz, I believe, um, of these these quartz complicated watches. Yeah, they are complicated, aren't they? I mean, they incredible sure are. dials. Yep. Yeah, the, the dial heck? works amazing. Obviously, know the brand, but I did try to research it, and they don't give too much information mm. at all, which is not really uh, forthcoming. You know what? That kind of ties in with a brand I'm going to talk about later that I just I don't understand. They have such amazing watches and then they don't post anything online. Yep. It's like they don't even have a marketing department. And that's the they old just, guard. Yeah. yeah. Or they don't care. <laughs> you know, sometimes if business is good enough, you don't care. It's a bit kind of like ignorant. Taking... No, you know, that's not what you're looking taking for. Taking the Mickey is the is the is the taking Mi the Mickey or... Mouse. <laughs> Americans don't say that, taking Take, the mickey. No, mickey to me is either the mouse or it's like a, a drink, uh, you know, you could drug someone's drink. <laughs> okay, um, the, 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 the vulgar way of saying it would be taking the piss. Okay, right. got it. You guys don't say that. Do no, no, no. Taking the piss. Taking the um, piss means you go to the bathroom. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What would, how would you say, how would you say that? Kind of. <laughs> Busting balls? No. no, that's not. No, that's not it. No. Um, yeah. Odd vernacular with TGV and Mark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Making fun of. Okay. I what guess would busting this... balls? I guess so. Bust. Yeah. Busting chops. Busting chops. Yeah, yeah. That's more polite, I think. Yeah. Somebody designed this. People put their heart and soul into right. these things. Right. Why don't you want you... it? Why don't you want it to sell? Yeah. Or you want it? Why don't you advertise it? Yeah, yeah. I get it. I, I want it. to know the story. I want to know why they may put this here. And well, there's a corporate there. decision somewhere that this does not get as much limelight as the rest of the collection. And poo-poo on you. Yeah. Do you think that's because of with giant corporations like Citizen? It's like, oh, it's the, because of that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what are you doing? Are you going to sell, you know, a thousand of these a year? Or do you want to sell, you know, 150,000 uh, Echo Drives in a month? And that's right, where they right, focus right. their efforts. All right, fair enough. That's why you have me for the business end. Yes, yes, yes. I don't know. It makes me value like smaller brands because you know it's a personal thing. Like a sure. lot of the watch companies I I buy off, I end up knowing the people behind right. them, and and you feel that kind of connection, and you yeah. understand a little bit why they design this and the. the yeah, I mean, I see it from I see both ends, right? I I can talk to the brand owner or one step down from the brand owner and, you know, I feel the connection and then I can deal with other larger companies and the salesman doesn't know an automatic from a quartz. Right. So. Right. Oh my God. <sighs> anyway. Oh, go um, ahead. Go with yours. What's, what's your next one? Oh, uh, my next one. It's just very easy. This is my vintage choice and it's Cartier. Okay. Hey, you, you've taken a liking to Cartier on, you know. I have. I, you see, m my mother, my aunt, my wife, they all love Cartier. And actually that uh, is a perfect example. It's, I think a lot of people just dismiss it as a, as a, as a luxury uh, yeah. jewel, jewelry maker, sure. which they should. I mean, sure. not they should, I mean, they are, right? Right. They make jewelry for uh, celebrities and royal families all over the world. And since the, since their founding, but I, I, you know, with my recent acquisition of the Santos and kind of, right. it's the, it was the first men's watch. And right. not only that, it's the first iconic watch. Yeah, for sure. Also, was it a pilot's watch or was it, it th these genres didn't exist. Right. I think it was Henry Cartier, a uh, personal friend of Santos Dumont. And you know, he's, he's trying to fly his route really early in pioneering flight, trying to, fly this thing and he's like ah oh, well you ha had to have both hands on the you know the flight was so short he doesn't have any even to, time to, to his time. right look at the watch uh, sorry to pull out his pocket right. watch yeah so it's much easier just to do that right um so he purpose-built this and this is a time where okay women had little tiny uh watches on their wrists on a little ribbon yep but it was seen as feminine right you know it took a war right to like you know uh, you know we're going off to war um, so it coincided with all this history, and, right. and a lot of people dismiss it as, as. And I think they're, especially now with the in-house movements, yeah. um, 
Yeah, the vintage stuff is amazing. They do a cool solar watch now. Yes, yes. Which is really yeah. cool. Yeah. Like, you wouldn't even know it's solar. Cause the mm. dial is still white. I think, you're right, I think I covered that in one of our videos. Yes, you it's did. The solar yeah. cell is the numerals, which is like genius. Yeah, genius. <laughs> yeah. Absolute genius. I'm so glad you brought that up because the tank is yeah. still a soft spot on the vintage market. Yeah. Um, you know, if you wanted to save a little money, you can get the, the, the silver, but with the gold plated. Yeah, I know what you mean. The vine vinyl? vinyl? Uh, they call that, uh, uh, oh my goodness. Ver, ver, vermeil, ver, oh my god, now you're killing me. <laughs> vermeil, vermeil, blue. It's an icon that you can own for a couple of grand. I know, I know that sounds expensive, but with the prices just going crazy everywhere. On, on, on everything else, yeah, and it's instantly yeah. recognizable. Yeah. Like instant. Exactly. Yeah, Santos was just like, boom, you know yeah. what it is immediately. Exactly. Not that many iconic watches or luxury iconic watches you, you are as accessible anymore. Right. You know, right. Uh, I, I struggle to think of any actually because it's just the prices are berserk. But anyway, they are berserk. Still inherently good value and, and beautiful designs and classic. And they, 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 you look at a tank from 19, when was it, 1919? Yeah, think? something like that. Yeah, right yeah. after World War One, right? Yeah. yeah. 100, 100 years ago. And the design still stands. Yeah. Yeah. You could still wear it yeah. casually Absolutely. or whatever. It just looks great. Yeah. You know? It does. Yeah. So, okay, so I'll you. go to my vintage pick then. Go since, for it. Since you're talking about, because you, these you can get, the vintage ones you can still get very affordably. I'm going back to a brand that I've talked about on the show before. I'm going back to Concord. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, Because yeah. Concord, to me, I own one. I own a, my, well, it's my father's. Um, mm -hmm. It's a Mariner, uh, Mariner SG. Uh, Concord is a brand that, I guess nowadays they're, they're still around. But their designs yeah. have totally gone way high tech. Once they started that whole C1 craze um, in like the 2000s, to me they kind of blah, they mm. lost their way. Um, mm. They go. I think they got bought up by Movado, um, Movado Group. Right. But they but they date back to like nine, like before World War One, like 1908, and then they, I guess the Quartz crisis kind of hit. What? But for them, it wasn't really a crisis. It was more of an embracing, and. Mm -hmm as these low cost watches were coming out of Japan, um, they said, hey, we're gonna make high end quartz watches. So they made these watches that are two grand to 20 grand, um, mm. like uh, the Centurion, which is most notably known as like the polo watch, the watch that the polo players wear. Right, um, yeah. Yeah, right, the, the Delirium, um, the yeah. one that my dad had, the Mariner. You know, these watches were like luxury quartz, good movements, and super duper thin. They had the delirium, which was like two millimeters thick, two mm. millimeters, and then they improved it to be like one and a half millimeters thick, which is like thicker than batteries nowadays, right? Wow. It, yeah. It's totally amazing. They did all these things. I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah, please. Since when does Walmart sell vintage watches? I uh, I think you're pro you're on Walmart.com. Yeah. You're looking at third party vendors more than likely. Is it like oh, okay. shipped and sold by? Kind of like an Amazon thing usually. Oh, okay. That's my guess. Oh, oh yeah, sold and shipped by. Don't advertise them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's why. Why, why? is it bad? No, I don't, you just don't know who you're advertising for. Oh, okay, yeah, It's yeah, not yeah, Island true. Watch, so it doesn't belong on the program today. Okay, okay, <laughs> fine. I Fair enough. I'm just looking at this, yeah. and they have the the one you're speaking of yeah. for like 400. Bucks. They're not expensive. You can find them on eBay in like in like like new condition for like under a thousand dollars still. It's very elegant. They're really I, nice. I would so wear. Yeah, that. I still wear. I still wear it. It's a 36. Nice. It's like I said. It's just under two millimeters thick. Um, and I say though that they kind of Concord fell off the map in like the 90s. It came out right. with the Saratoga, which was actually a cool looking watch. Uh, as well. Um, they, I'm going to uh, look that yeah, up. Yeah, sure. Look at the Saratoga. Saratoga was nice. And the La Scala. Uh -huh. And then they started with this C1 garbage. And, well, to me, it's I, I just didn't really care for it. Very high-tech stuff. Big, bulky. Um, I feel like it's totally... Oh, totally, my God. That's hideous. What do you look at? Yeah. The C1? Yeah. It's totally the antithesis of what you just looked at, right? Yeah, what? It's, it's, like, it, it, it's like a vegan chef making a steak. It right. makes no sense. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, they're kind of a bit hublowish yeah. mixed with royal oak. I, and I understand that they're loaded with tech. I get yeah. it. It's a lot. There's a lot of high tech going on, but I just this isn't the company that you know prospered in the 70s, 80s, and early 90s. Oh my God! Look at this monstrosity. <laughs> it's like what's going on? I'm looking at that. Oh yeah, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Amazing that that's the company that came out with those little thin wafer watches. Yeah, and they've gone. Oh God, they've I mean, gone to play what, it. yeah. What what do you think inspired this move? You have to think of the timeline that we're talking about. So they're in the early '90s, um, and Quartz Crisis is kind of over. So uh -huh. I feel like, well, it is over, right? The '90s, it's over. Quartz Crisis, is like the '80s. I, th I think they tried to really just flip gears again and make luxury mechanical watches. I feel like that's what you're looking at. But I just don't think it resonated. Yeah, yeah. It's a turby on this one. It's the quantum yeah. gravity. It's ridiculous. Yeah, definitely a, definitely a brand that's um, you know, no longer, I would say, relevant at all. I can see why. I, they, they should have just... Gone out of business. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, no, I think they should have just developed and refined continue those what they were doing mariner and, and it'll come back yeah it's a shame i i really like those concord ones you 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 have yep. yeah yeah i love it so this was 2009 they went completely mental and then just, <laughs> just yeah you got it by actual turbion yeah. i can't imagine the cost of, what a waste of money yeah it's trying to compete with like uh grubel and forcey I'll, I'll yeah i'll say their name wrong but that's what you yeah yeah, yeah you're it's, right yeah, good luck with that. Um, well, FP Jorn in a way, uh, just yeah. a lot of those real, um, uh, those real independents. Oh, the, the, that is the segue of the century. Oh, what do you got yeah, there? Yeah. <laughs> so with my luxury, I went with, uh, and everyone is probably going to roll their eyes at this, uh, Roman Gautier. Perfect. That's um, okay. Independent, like you said. Yeah. Uh, this guy was born 1975 in... Val de yeah. Valley du Joux, so the heartland, and if you guys are not familiar, uh, when I, I, I visited his factory and it, he, I, okay, so there's, there's two reasons why I picked this guy. First of all, um, he took me around the factory, right? And with a lot of factory tours, the owner or the designer or, the, or whoever very seldom yeah. actually makes the watch. Right, right. right. This guy... This guy can do every, he perfected every process and can do it with yeah. his eyes shut Beautiful. himself. Which I haven't seen that since the 18th century, since, <laughs> since Thomas Tompion, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. <laughs> like, that's mental. Um, he was literally f blowing parts of the watch in an oven in front of me, and I was right. just like, incredible. Obviously, he employs watchmakers. Sure. He, otherwise, it would take, you know, five years to make one watch. Right. Beautiful. But the, I, and the second reason is that his watches are technically innovative, but they are beautiful. They're tastefully yeah. done. They're not Absolutely. these flashy, like my grail is his Insight uh, micro rotor. And the whole thinking of it was, it's like a skeletonized watch, but to show off the movement in a, in a very particular way. If you look at it from the behind, you still understand what's going on. It's not flashy. It's, look at it's that. The, yeah, it, the, the, the refinement and all the polishing and all the beveling and all the d different f surfaces and all of this stuff. It's this amalgamation of like classic stuff. Yeah, sure. But new without going crazy like Concord did, you know? Right. Uh, um, Request price. Oh, that's never good. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> I know. If but you have to ask, you can't afford Exactly. That's why it's uh, my grail, my long, long-term grail. Um, that you really need DuckTales money for. DuckTales. The logical one, I think, is his... Pro his he, I'm pretty sure he won several awards for that. It takes um, uh, a chain in Fuse... Fuse? Mm -hmm. or Fuse? Fuse. Um, F-U-S-E-E. -E. So right. so God knows it. how you pronounce yeah. that. Uh, which is ancient. I mean, yeah. if you Google it, you see it back in the day, so it's it's a it's a way of uh, it's a me uh, mechanism to power the movement yep. by slowly un unleashing the power from a wound up chain. Yeah, right? same way Atmos works. Right, right, and it's back in the day it was big. Yeah. So he put it in a tiny one 
in a watch and you can see it moving. Oh, that's just, awesome. Yeah, crazy, crazy, uh, very inventive. Um, that was called the logical one? Yeah, the logical oh, one. Oh, look at that, there's a freaking chain in the watch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, saw, I, know, I know Tag once did a, uh, a chain-driven watch as a, right. as like a, uh, a, a gimmick. Right, look yeah. Look at that. It's nuts, right? That is not nuts. Nuts is not the word. I watched the, uh, one of the watchmakers individually polishing every link in that chain. I'm sure. So it's like tiny, tiny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just that's like, awesome. oh my god. And, that's awesome. And you, that's what you pay for. Yeah. Oh, sure. You know, um, just amazing stuff. Really, really amazing. That's my. So that's my. Obviously, my luxury. Uh, that's very nice. Yeah. yeah. Well, then I'll follow up with my luxury, if you don't mind. Go for it. So. I apologize. It's not going to be watches. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but it's going to tell the oh, time. Okay. okay. They make watches, but I'm not doing it for their watches. I'm doing it for their clocks. Uh, Ir Irv, if you want, it's German. Uh, Irvin Sattler. Um, e R W I N S A T T L E R. Sounds like a law firm. Irvin Sattler and Partners. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I was first introduced to them at Basel in 2018. Oh my god! And the, I obviously oh had. Oh my god! I, look at that! I obviously had no interest in clocks, and I told the guy that you know I'm here for the watches, and he's like, "Well, look at the clocks, you know, I will talk to you about." <laughs> and the guy talked to me for like 30 minutes. He was so nice, and totally. For, you know, from an engineering standpoint, you have to understand this is where you could just geek out over this stuff. So they make these pendulum clocks. Uh -huh. They're ex like like grandfather clocks. But they're extremely, extremely accurate. We're talking some of them are a few seconds a month, uh -huh. okay? And it's driven by a weight. Um, oh so where God. do we start? I don't even know where to start. So they're, if you want to really get into the engineering of it, right, their entire pendulum mechanism is made out of invar. And invar is a very high nickel content uh, metal. We use it in engineering for RF phase shifters and stuff. Right. It doesn't, it's used in watches. It doesn't grow or shrink much with temperature. It has a very low CTE. You, it also, you, you gotta have a really big house. Well, that's the biggest one they make. That's like the grand, <laughs> that's, like, that's like 10 feet tall, dude. That thing's like a quarter, that's like, that thing's like a quarter million euro. But they make smaller surprised. ones. The smaller okay. ones are like 40,000 euro, and then they make even smaller ones for like a few thousand euro. So they're oh, not bad. I see, I see. But what totally drives it drives me bonkers is that so they have these invar pendulums so that they don't really grow or shrink over time because you know the the period of a clock right uh, mm -hmm. of a pendulum clock is related to the length of the pendulum okay okay that's all that matters not the weight of it nothing it's 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 a uh, two pi square root of length over gravity and i'm not okay. looking down at notes i know this i remember this from, from school right so only the length of the pendulum matters and your gra and gravity where you're located so they got this this pendulum that doesn't grow or shrink much with temperature, and then they have two little they have two compensation mechanisms. At the mm -hmm. bottom, you'll see a bunch of springs. That's thermal compensation. As the temperature in the room changes, there's little weights that move, so it shifts the center of mass of the pendulum up or down to account for changes in temperature. And then near the top of the pendulum, on a lot of them, you'll see another little spring mechanism. And that is accounting for changes in atmospheric pressure. Because as the atmospheric pressure goes up, that means the air is getting more dense and the pendulum has to swing harder through the air. And it actually adjusts for changes in atmospheric pressure. There's little so weights that shift the center of mass dense, of the pendulum, the pendulum up near the down. top of the pendulum to count for changes in temperature. Let's another little spring and in the pendulum to adjust the change in the atmosphere. Atmosphere. And that is Now, when you get it, they give you a manual and they explain to you that we've adjusted <laughs> it for our factory in Germany. But you're going to have to adjust it because where you are on Earth is a different elevation and the mm. gravitational constant is going to be slightly different where you are due to your altitude. So you they give you these little weights, these little gram weights and these little screw things that you use to really dial in the precision of the clock. I mean, these guys have taken accuracy to total mentalness. It's insane. Mm. It, you could geek out over it. And uh, I obviously do. I want one of their clocks so bad. Have you seen their, their factory? No, I've seen their clocks. <laughs> but <laughs> have you seen what it, it looks like? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've watched the YouTube videos and stuff. Yeah, for sure. Wow. It's beautiful. It's tremendous. Wow. That's, that's something else, yeah. isn't it? 
Yeah, it I can't w- believe that. I, I mean, I, this, is, this is not this is not a bad thing, but yeah. the fact that there's enough of demand for this I, for them to even exist. I would say so. I don't know how many they sell, but I will tell you the booth and their booth in Basel for the years I saw them was tremendous. Really, a large booth. Um, and a very large multitude of clocks. I don't. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say they're not very popular here in the states. Um, yeah, I've that, never. I've that, never that, heard that's of my guess. I want one, um, but I think most of their clientele is either in Europe or over in Asia. Um, maybe with a little more free money floating around. It's a gravitational pendulum clock that's accurate to you know more than spring drive. Utterly insane. Yeah, but uh, very very cool. I thank you. Th- thank you for putting me on. They also make watches. But they're just, they do. They, they do, but they're just nice watches. They 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 started a watch line, so oh, wow. that's how I keep it into watches. They're very nice. They have a regulator. Yeah, that's they do. Gorgeous. Yeah, they're very nice. But this is where, oh, okay. the, where the tech I mean, is at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. It's kind of Bregeish. Yes. Very nice. Okay. okay. Well, that's definitely. Um, that's my luxury pick. Very nice. That is that's real luxury. That is something that, you know, you. I'd buy the giant one, right? If I had Ducktales money, and yeah, I'd, yeah. I'd build the house around it, so you could, <laughs> you, know, you know. Yeah, for sure. That would be amazing. Anyways, yeah. Ah, oh, must be nice. Yeah. What do you got? I'm just drooling at all their clocks now. They they got. Some yeah, they like, have like um celestial clocks too. They have a, you know they have a lot of different complications. Moon, you know, moon stuff and all the other garbage. God. Oh. They got some skeleton watch, uh, yes. clocks that yeah. are just They're gorgeous. gorgeous. Right, I'll come back to that in my own time. Sorry, guys. <laughs> uh, what, what is next for me? Um, I, I'm gonna describe this as entry level luxury. Hanhart. Okay. You know, I think they're criminally underrated. Funnily enough, you were talking about a German brand. Yeah. But when it comes to watches, it's always Zinn, yeah. Young Hands. Yeah. Uh, no most. Nomos, yeah. Lange, it's yeah. that's sure. the first. No one ever says Hanhart. Right. And and I, I don't understand why. I, I, I've reviewed one and then of course we collaborated and there was about a year gap after the review and actually that's I think that's how they, they came across me. And then they found out that one of my grails was the, the old 417ES um, that I had the honor and pleasure of of helping. It's not really a re- redesign, but mm-hmm. it was more consultation because it's not like it's not like I did with Laurier where it's like we start from scratch. Right. With a heritage piece like that, you can't you can't change things. It's like owning a condo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You could, you know, it was even too much if when I suggested, "Oh, can I can I have this bit red or this right. uh, oh no, we can't do it." Right. You know, it's, it's a totally different style of design. Anyway, I'm not talking about that. Um so I, they have an amazing history. They were mm-hmm. founded in 1882. So, so they were originally Swiss, and then they're kind of Swiss German. They moved back to Germany. Uh, now they're in Gutenbach in the mm-hmm. Black Forest, just over the border there, close to Switzerland. Um, they were the first to produce the single pusher chronograph with the caliber 40 in 1938, and ever since then they've specialized in chronographs. Right. During the war and after the war, they made watches for officers of mm-hmm. the German Air Force. Mm-hmm. It's kind of logical if you think about it, because like, you know, that, that Laco and, and Sto, uh, Stover, yep. and they made the Fliegers. But yeah. if you're an officer, you had a chronograph, yeah. a more complicated watch. You know, you're a you higher rank, so right. you had a more expensive watch, so you could have that complication. Since then, they did... They've become famous in Germany for all the um, sporting uh, stop, uh, you know, stopwatches and mm-hmm. uh, timing their sporting events all over Germany. So, and and I think um, I don't know how true that it, this is, but if there are any German viewers, apparently, if you went to school in Germany, and most likely the timing equipment was uh, Hanhart. Hanhart. Okay. So they have this rich, rich, rich legacy of making sure. chronographs, and they still do, and. You know, when I f- first reviewed one, I can't remember, it was 2019 or something, mm-hmm. and I got my hands on it, and I was just like, my God, the, just the quality, the finishing. Right. The, the, you know, like, rivals anything Omega do, right. Zinn do, really high end. Mm-hmm. And 
you know, they, they, they start at a grand and a couple of grand for their chronographs. And, mm. and they're just, they're wonderful. I, yeah. I, I don't understand why they don't get more love. What is the origin of the name? Was it someone's name? Yeah, someone's name. It was, name, yeah. okay. Yeah, family name. The brand is very strong in terms of their identity. So they, mm. they had this red pusher. Yeah, the red, yeah, the red pusher, yeah. The iconic red pusher. And the red and black is very mm. like, they have this 1930s style that is very um, consistent and has always been, you know, if you compare it to Zinn, right. Zinn is half its age. And right. yeah, Zinn has their Navi timer and they have their, their divers and it's, right. but if you took the label, the name branding off, you look at a hand heart and you know it's a hand heart. Right, I, I guess there's a lot of- Do you of, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, um, coin edging, I guess I'll say. Yeah. Large yeah, yeah. onion crowns. Yeah. yeah, you don't even need the red pusher. You kind of know that it, it's, it's that look. Exactly. It's almost, it's almost like Tutima in a way, I, I would say. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yeah. It's well, that's, an, that's another, another. Yeah, when you said hand hard, I was like, oh yeah, yeah, Tutima also kind of the same. You know, they don't, yeah. they, they, they get, that should be one of your honorable mentions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah, it was oh, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. yeah. No, I get what you mean. Uh, um, there's not much more to say. I, I, I just love them. And, and you know, collaborating with them, the, the fact that, they, that they're open, open-minded open enough yeah, sure. to work with me, I, right. I was just like, incredible. Yeah. Well, I think you don't give yourself enough credit, more than likely. I guess not. Oh, yeah, well. there you go. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. I'll take that as a compliment. Um, yeah, it is a compliment. It was a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. No, I love them. They're great. They're great people. They have a museum as well. And I will, one day, I'm going to get on a plane and I'm going to go. And hopefully I'll share it with you guys because they need, they need more recognition. Uh, a little, yeah, a little publicity, it. sure. Yeah. Back to you. Well, I'm on my last one now. Right. So I'm going affordable and I'm going to, it's a, it's a British company. And I'm oh, going to really? be, yeah, and I'm going to be surprised if you know it. Okay. Maybe, because I don't think it flies in your radar. It is uh, Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones. I don't, don't know and this. Not the Counting Crow song. That's Mrs. <laughs> Jones. So, Mr. Jones watches. It's a, it's, like I said, it's a British company. I think they're in London. I'm just going to okay. class, they're in the affordable category, and I'm just going to classify them as unusual watches. Okay. They come in automatic, and they come in quartz. Their real, I guess, draw, or the reason why I think that they deserve more recognition is just uh, the designer, uh, Crispin Jones, I guess the guy the company is named after. Uh, their dials and the way they portray the time is totally, totally unique. Um, if you're looking at the pictures, like I said, you'll, you'll, oh, I'm sure you'll I, throw some up. You've probably yeah. seen the pictures of these before. I've seen these, I didn't know what it was yeah, called. Yeah, they have like right. the perfectly useless afternoon, which is the p overhead of a pool shot, and the leg is moving, and the life preserver, I think, oh, is circling. Oh, this is really fun, I They're like this. Fun, fun is the best yeah. way to do it. They had the ricochet, which was based off of pinball. Um, Oh, no, no, Rick, was Ricochet Pinball or was Number Cruncher Pinball? No, Number Cruncher was the thing eating them. Yeah, Ricochet was like based off of, all, you know, old pinball machines. They have planets telling the time on some of them. Just really cool, really fun, affordable. A couple hundred bucks for quartz, a little bit more for the autos. But really, right. I mean, just kind of looking at the pictures, it's like, oh, my, that's so nifty, you know? Yeah, yeah, And the way yeah, the dials yeah. are, I believe the watches might be assembled in London. I think, a lot, I think a lot of the major components, they import, but then they're printing the dials hmm. in London with the, you know, the old school, you know, like a bladder printer kind of thing where they hmm. transfer the ink from, from, what, from a plate uh, to the dial um, in multiple layers. It just looks really nifty, really cool. I, I love I love the fact that they're so playful and, and yes, it, it's you know this is what sometimes sometimes watches can be so like oh, serious yeah, yeah yeah this is to, this is totally unserious not only the dial printing and the colors used and everything else also the way the time is portrayed hmm. is just you know just different just really cool it's different right yeah God look at this case they do some crazy that that look at that yeah. There's the space uh, between the um, the lugs and yeah, that's yeah, yeah, it's very cool, very right? cool. Yeah, um, and so, sorry, so how much would the, are couple these? hundred couple hundred bucks for the quartz and a little bit more for the autos? Oh, nice. Yeah, no, it's it's affordable, and they're not yeah. you know they're not boasting Eta movements or anything like that, or you know it's just you're not buying them for the movement, you're buying them for the for the look. 
And I like the fact that this is a bit more accessible. And it's, it's very uh, 80s swatchy, if you will. Yes, right? yes. That, now you mention kind of it. Like, but, but without the cheap plastic, you know. Right, right. That's great. I, the world needs more of this, I think. Yeah, for sure. I, lo I love it. What a fantastic choice. Thank you. Fantastic choice. I think that's all of them. No, you have to give your oh, last oh, one. Oh, yeah. Oh, my Sorry, I got my... <laughs> I was like, really? Earlier you mentioned, we were talking about Campanola. Yeah. Uh, and you said how, you know, they we, we were saying how they don't have anything really online. You, you, you don't yeah. really know anything oh, about Oh, right, right. Uh, Casio Edifice. Yeah, similar. Because so, it, it's exactly the same thing. Um, they do some really cool stuff. Yeah. I've owned two before I had a channel, so I know what I'm talking about. And, mm. and, and I had the EQS 500BD. 1A1 blah 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 which is about 200 bucks and it had everything it had world time it was incredibly complicated yeah. with with, with uh, calendars and this and stopwatch and all this stuff it, um, but the, what really impressed me was the quality the low price is about 200 bucks you can still right. buy them right uh, the, this incredible layering on the dial that made it like yeah multi-dimensional yeah um, quite like avant-garde but yet functionally it had a purpose and mm -hmm. very very cool watch and wasn't that expensive at some point casio decided to, to create edifice at, at a as a offshoot brand of a slightly high higher level kind of premium like an oceanus kind of thing exactly yeah. like yeah in okay. fact I, ne I nearly i nearly said them as well yeah because um, yeah. that's who i think about yeah right when this happened i can't find out so the earliest ones i, I were in the 2000s right you know but they were all very, very complicated uh, complication watches, analog. Sometimes they did any digi, and it was to uh, you know I've got I've got a list of things: uh, multiple alarms, Bluetooth connect right. connectivity, wave sector technology, which is remote calibration via automatic radio signals. All mm -hmm. this kind of like higher end stuff, but never too expensive. Right. But in the world of Casio, that is the higher end. Right, because you know? right, for them it is, sure. Yeah, um, but for the consumer, you get a, a feature-rich, function-rich watch for you know not that much money that can do absolutely everything mm -hmm. in an analog, analog way. Because as we all know, Casio's are, uh, Casio is the master of the digital, digital watch. Digital, sure. Um, so that was the point of it. They sponsored various racing teams, really, really, adventurous designs uh and like i said their dial work but casio if you're listening not that you would not but that they are no <laughs> <laughs> you know re redesign the website i want to know the story behind the the, the watches i want to know why how when you know right the fundamentals of like a brand like right so do they have their own website or it's, does it, is it Casio Edifice or is it... Yeah, yeah, just, they have their own web, okay. website. But you know what it is? I think with G-Shock and the Casio watch yeah. world being so huge... Yeah, G-Shock is it's either G-Shock or nothing. Yeah. G-Shock is the only watch brand I know that, that comes out with a new watch like every week. Yeah, yeah. they do. <laughs> I'm not I'm not. No, joking. they do, they do. <laughs> it's like every week. You know, uh, Edifice have kind of fallen off a little bit. They, I haven't seen any, the new ones don't, haven't really done any. I, it's, it's almost as if they've kind of had their, their budget slashed or something. Yeah, I think kind of like what we were talking about before with, you know, with corporate decisions and, and money. And, you know, would you rather sell half a million G-Shocks this month or do you want to sell, you know, 10,000 yeah. Oceanus or Edifice? I th I think it's a mistake. I think Casio could could do something with Edifice and combat the smartwatch by mm -hmm. having smart an analog watches, which right. I think is kind of where they were going. Mm -hmm. It's a shame. I, 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 you know, they they got they were onto a good thing. I yeah. think, um, but their loss is our gain. So you can buy one uh, at a great price. Yeah, affordable. It does absolutely everything. Right. Uh, very durable. Very accurate. Uh, the quality as well, like, it's it's difficult to do dial work like that. Affordably, um, yeah. Affordably, yeah. exactly, yeah, exactly. I agree. Uh, oh, and guys, if anybody knows about Edifice or Campanola, please share in the comments, that would be great. Um, 
Do you have any honorable mentions? I have, I have two. Okay. I have two. My first one would be um, the Light Campanola uh, is a brand called Shellman. Which uh, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. not even sure if Shellman is around anymore because the only link I can find to them is like a non-HTTPS site, which gives, you know <laughs> throws up the open padlock in Google and stuff. So yeah, I've been on it. I never yeah, so one. Shellman made super duper complicated um, quartz watches, uh, mm. uh, you know, with you know day, date, month, year, moon phase, leap year, moon phase, everything. And they yeah. were really nice looking and they were semi pricey. Um, so Shellman was one of them. If I could have found more information on them, maybe they would have been included or maybe they don't exist anymore. Who the hell knows? Yeah. Uh, and then my other one would be much like, um, like yes, watch. I own, we I think we've had this discussion, uh, Geochron. Oh so yeah. So they yeah, make yeah. the moving map wall clocks. Yes. I have one of those and you know, displays the daylight curve mechanically over the entire earth shows you the time shows you what day of the week you are what the date is where you are locally and all other stuff so nice. i think they're cool. underappreciated um they're a little pricey but you know they're really cool uh, and they still make those right they still you know it's funny because they're like only dude they're like only five people in the whole company oh wow still that's have cool it. yeah cool that's what do you cool. got um okay Sertina, which i think i did in my original video years and years ago for those who don't know Sertina. It's a shame because they're part of the Swatch group now, but they were famous for, for being an early innovator in sh uh, kind of shockproof, mm -hmm. uh, what, uh, really durable cases. That's why they have that turtle as their logo. Yep. DS1 um, is what comes to mind, right? Yeah. Great watches. Uh, Gerard Perrigo, I think, is a, a very accessible hor horology brand that's yeah. still innovative. And, yeah, um, sure. They, they had that hairline, what was it? It's, uh, hold on. I'll know this. It was constant force escapement. I think it was. Mm -hmm. Just hurts my mind. Yeah, yeah, uh, sure. I don't even understand it. But yep. anyway, great stuff. Um, Laco, you know, I think Marathon. Sure. Yeah. Hemel, great. Oh yeah, sure. Hey Marvin. Yeah, hey Marvin. Um, <laughs> fantastic micro brand. Uh, the two, the two that I really want to say is um, Mont Blanc. I okay. think. You know, you think pens, but... You think pens, the, yeah. Yeah, but their watches are gorgeous. Yeah. Beautifully made. I Do they really make one. their own watches, or are they private label made by a Swiss factory somewhere? See, uh, I don't know the answer to that, and I don't want to spread any rumors. I have no idea, but they are beautifully made. They are. And they're very tastefully done, and their world timer is gorgeous. You know, like, I, you don't have to pay protect prices, and, and they're just tastefully done sure. um and the other brand is rotary i i, I talked about them uh, in a... they've been through a lot of stuff lately yeah they, like a lot of change in ownership and this yeah. and that yeah but they're still putting out of beautifully you see that's that's the thing is that it's funny i did a video recently where it was uh <laughs> just it was basically me complaining about why most new watches suck right? oh yeah that was one of your most recent uploads you yeah. were I, you had that mean face on yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah. You're like all upset. <laughs> yeah, um, and you know what? A lot of it just comes down to just just make a nice, tastefully decent sized classic watch, right? right? And, like it's not that difficult, and preferably something that hasn't been done before. So right. you're doing, you know, it doesn't have to revolutionize, but just make sure. it accessible and nice, right? And, you know, and Rotary have done that. It did that. I, I nominated the Rotary in my, our last video. You mm -hmm. know, it was um, just a very affordable dress watch. Got it. Yeah. Um, okay. Oh, La Chute Original. Uh, oh, original, I got written here. Right, let's, let's wrap it up. Wrap um, it. Right, guys, I, I got to say a massive thank you to Mark for uh, sponsoring the production of this video. Thank you very much for making it all possible. Uh, guys, please do share your nominations. Underrated, uh, overrated, no, sorry, underrated. Underappreciated. <laughs> underappreciated, that's what I want to say. Thank you. Uh, in the comments below. Um, yeah, and, and little, little reasons why you like them or, or that, you know, some reflection or commentary like that, I really do appreciate. Uh, don't forget to like this video, very important indeed. And of course, follow Mark. Uh, I'll leave a link to his channel, Instagram, all of that good stuff in uh, the description below. And we will catch you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Ciao. Bye.